like Hard Rock, it's, you feel like you're, you're a very small part of that big environment and you know the lightning will come crashing down and the hail will be you know, blowing against your face and you just you have to be adaptable and I think it's, you know, it's, it forces you to be a little bit more animal-like. The wildness of the terrain, it's, uh, you, you know, if you take a city slicker and you dropped them in the middle of the course, you know, they would, they would, it would be very scary because there's there's wildlife and weather and places you can fall and die and um, and here we're having a fun event you know we come every year and we pay money for this it's it's kind of crazy the the total elevation that runners run for this is equivalent to running from sea level to the top of Mount Everest and back. It's over 33,000 feet of climbing and 33,000 feet of descending. And the average elevation, they do that at an average elevation of a little over two miles above sea level. Et c'est amusant le, le, le petit décalage qu'on pourrait imaginer lorsqu'on voit cette course de l'Europe et qu'on n'y est jamais venu. Euh, tout le monde imagine c'est une grande course, c'est quelque chose d'immense. C'est une grande course. Mais ce n'est pas une course compétition. C'est un, un grand rassemblement de coureurs et euh, de gens qui aiment la montagne, et courir en montagne et ensemble. Tu en, es combien en cardio En cardio, 52. Bah, ça va, moi je suis 64. Ouais. Putain, normalement. Euh... Attends. Ce euh... matin, j'étais 42. Ouais. Je, euh... Non, mais t'es bien. Je suis au bord de la route. Ça, il euh... <rire> La volée. Ouais. C est, c est... <rire> 10 de plus, 10 de moins. Ouais, c'est plus ou moins. Ouais. Are you gonna run everything? Mm, no, I think it's uh, not possible. Not possible? No. Come on. Even for a tough Frenchman like you? Yeah. <laughs> for the pirate? <laughs> the French pirate? The, the philosophy of the hard rock is that the last runner is as important as the first runner and it's really a, a race of, of the runner against mother nature and it's a, it's a race again, or a run against between the runner and the mountains that they run through. Sur, sur toute cette partie, on est monté à Andy's Peak, euh, là-haut on s'est fait une petite pause, on a profité d'un décor euh, incroyable, vraiment, euh, et puis bon c'est à 14, 000, 14 050 euh, pieds, donc ce qui fait euh, en gros euh, 4300 mètres d'altitude. Donc la, la, la particularité, euh, Joe m'en avait, avait parlé au départ, c'est qu'on peut avoir des changements de météo très très rapides et très violents, comme euh, par exemple les orages de grêle ou de pluie euh, en, en très très grande quantité. Il m'avait prévenu aussi qu'il fallait vraiment que je fasse le plein en eau, parce que dans, dans cette vallée de Ouré, qui risquait de faire chaud si le soleil sortait, 
euh, avec l'humidité de la pluie, de la veille, on, on pouvait vraiment avoir très très chaud et faire des coups de déshydratation alors que euh, quelques miles avant, on était en train de grelotter euh, avec coup de vent et, et limite la neige. Yeah, in, in the U.S., we, in most 100 milers, we allow pacing, and the idea is that the pacer is there to essentially make sure the runner stays safe. You know, they stay on the course, uh, they make sure that they're eating, drinking, um, but for top runners, uh, it's, I think, a, a, a really special uh, opportunity from a, a mental standpoint, because psychologically, um, that pacer can help you through, say, a bad situation in the race, uh, mentally, when you're, when you're down. Um. sortait quelques mots en français euh, euh, qui, étaient, qui étaient relativement amusants. Euh, bon, après, il a appris des, des expressions toutes faites euh, du style euh, « faut se sortir les doigts du... Euh, » ou bien euh, « on n'est pas là pour acheter un bout de terrain ». Donc euh, ça, c'est des expressions que j'utilise régulièrement. Et, et de ce fait, il avait été euh, sondé le terrain au, dans, dans mon environnement proche pour, euh, pour réussir à avoir des, des méthodes de motivation euh, française. Donc c'était assez drôle parce qu'avec l'accent, c'est... Terrible, terrible. We have to hurry in the aid station a bit more. <laughs> but um, yeah, he runs very strong up the climb in Virginia. Yeah. So, you know, Joe, I don't know if it was, I'm not sure exactly why he ended up dropping, but I heard he had stomach issues and things like that. So once I, I heard that and, uh, and then in Telluride, I thought I might have a chance to try and catch Seb. He had slowed down. Yeah, then maybe I would have pushed hard again. But he kept being stronger and stronger. So he just did. what a great job by Seven. So I was really happy to see him do so well on his his first time out here. And I hope he hope he comes back and really enjoyed his time in Colorado. You know, during the race, everyone probably thinks, you know, maybe never again. I'll never do hard rock again. That's crazy, stupid. But then by the time they get home, or maybe two days after you know, they're back on their job, the first thing they want is they want to go back to hard rock again. But why? <laughs> maybe there's no answer. <laughs> and each race is different. You know, you have moments that you are asking, yourself, you are an idiot. What are you doing out here instead of sitting in front of the TV and eat some chips and have fun and music? But after this has gone, and when you have finished a hundred miles, you are the big guy for yourself, you know, and life is totally different. Ils n'appellent pas ça une race, hein. ils n'appellent pas ça une course, ils appellent ça un run, donc euh, courir les uns avec les autres. Et, et, et cet aspect-là, on le ressent bien, on est très euh, familial. Get ready for the post yeah. oh. Thank you for Merci.
I'm a hard worker. You're now a hard rocker. Yes. yes. C'est énorme, 